Hey, what's up? I'm Zoe, and today I am going to tell you about my book habit, all the good and the bad. I started a list of all of the habits that I have noticed that I have while reading. Let's get into it. <laughs> Sometimes whenever I start a book, I will start it and then I will abandon it. I don't know why I do this. <laughs> I will go into a book super excited, super ready for this new journey, and then I reach a point where I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna put this down for a little while. I think I'll start another journey. And then a year will pass, maybe two, maybe three. Oh my gosh, I love to crack the spine on books. I know it bothers people. You know, something about when you do that first spine crack, oh my gosh, like it just, it just, it's just such a better experience of reading. Find where your place was because like the book is just, it's gonna open right back up to that spot. And it's not even that you couldn't read the book if you left it, but like nothing like a good spine crack to get in the mood. You know what I'm saying? never reading the fight scenes in books. I read Twilight or one of the Twilight books and there was this really long fight scene that I feel like went on for five chapters and by the time I came out of that experience I no longer cared about fight scenes. They are there for I don't know who they're there for but they are not there for me. You just need to let me know if anyone loses a limb or someone is badly injured or if we lose anyone. That's all I need to know. I have Stalking Jack the Ripper. When I started this series, the paperback was already out for the first book. I couldn't wait for the paperback for this one because I needed answers. And me being impatient, I officially started myself down a path of all different versions for this. Though I think they still look good because it's not like the covers are like different editions or anything. Like they're still the same visuals we need all hardcover if i would have been thinking back then i would have waited for paperbacks all the way through i have to stick to one if i start off with paperback i need to get all the paperbacks if i start with hardcover i should get all the hardcovers this one was like one of those first early times of getting into reading again blunders where i didn't really realize that that was something that would bother me later on but now it bothers me a lot it is safe for you to assume at this point that I am the type of person who likes to annotate their books. I am. The only books that you can definitely bet I will annotate are fantasy books. There's so much information that comes out in a fantasy book that you have to keep track of. So many characters, so much world building, so many different um, political intrigues and things like that and character developments and relationships that you have to keep track of. So I think annotating fantasy books is just, it just makes sense in my head and I love to do it. I love to tear them apart, especially books like Harry Potter. I usually like my fantasy series to be hard covers because I think it's easier to annotate a hardcover whenever I'm in my bed. It's kind of like having your own little nice little surface on here. When I have a paperback, I feel like I need a table or something just to secure it a little bit more so I can get straight lines when I'm underlining or when I'm writing in the margins and things like that. So um, fantasy books, I don't mind them being hard covers just because I feel like they just look better that way anyways. Then a good old paperback is fine for everything else. A contemporary romance like this, you know, I'm not very likely to annotate this. And I feel like most romance books come out in paperback form right away anyways. And then for mystery books, I tend to lean towards audiobooks. And this is actually something that I realized this year. I think it keeps me from spoiling myself. For example, Turn of the Key. I still enjoyed this book so much. Totally recommend. I did spoil myself on some things because I couldn't help but read ahead. You know that weird thing where your peripheral will like kind of be on the page but you're kind of like sneaking a look at the other side? Yeah, that happened a lot with me. I. I get tempted and for some reason I just, my eyes, they just wander. I think for me, mysteries should definitely be consumed in audiobook form because um, any type of physical version, hardcover, paperback, that doesn't really matter. 
I start multiple books. Sometimes I don't even update my Goodreads with them because I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna stick to it and I don't want to have more books sitting there for a year with no progress. I think that it just helps me focus and I feel like when I revisit a certain world, I feel even more attracted to it. Like I started Star Sight in August and I had no interest in it. But when I was reading it in between my Nancy Drew reads, I all of a sudden found the world so fascinating again and I was just so into it. Taking the sleeves off of my books. I feel like most people do that though, but yeah, I take those sleeves off when I'm reading. It's just so much easier, unless it's a library book, but yeah, so. That's my other habit. And those are all of the book habits I have for you today. Let me know if you relate to any of the habits that I have or just let me know some of the habits that you have whenever you're reading. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already, turn on some alerts so you don't miss new videos. And that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Maybe